applause for while you're away. Woo! Very nice. Uh, folks, we are very lucky to have this fella here with us. We've been trying to get him on the show for a while. Uh, ben Malaby, who is a award-winning uh, and nominate, multi-award winning and nominated director. We love his work a lot. We've uh, shown one of his films before, but we are lucky to have him here to talk to us. He's created a lot of great comedy content. There's a lot online that you can find. We've got his Twitter on there, so you can check that out and get through to his socials and find all that. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to your screen, Ben Malaby. Hooray. There he is. I think I've got to make your screen bigger. There. Bong. Hey, welcome. Thank you for coming. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good stuff. Um, so we're going to get straight into it. You, I've, we've watched quite a few of your films, and you seem to work pre almost nearly predominantly with stand-up comics acting in your films. Is there a reason for that, and what's it like? Uh, I guess it happened by accident. Um, originally... Uh, I lived with a stand-up comic. We were just shooting stupid stuff at university. Mm -hmm. We kept shooting stupid stuff, and then I started shooting with uh, the girl he was seeing at the time, and then we carried on making stuff. And we hired other stand-ups to be in supporting roles, and I'd make stuff with them. And so it just started kind of like that and never That's stopped. Um, but I uh, oh. like that they have a lot of spare time. I like that they're all writers. Oh, I like that they're quite natural performers. Um, and if you can just find someone with the same kind of sensibilities, then you've kind of got a huge uh, pool of writers that you can draw upon and, and uh, try stuff out with. Okay, so what about as, as performers, like as, as in terms of performances in your films? Like, do, you think, do you think they bring something fresh to the table? Yeah, some of them are... Some of them just take up so naturally, and they'll often write roles that they know that they can play really well. Um, and some need a bit of, you know, a bit more practice. I've worked with a lot of comedians for whom, um, let's call them dramatic roles, still comedy, but but um, where they're playing characters for film, it might be their first time. Uh, so they're, 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 you know, they're, they're trying to feel it out. And, but, but I just, generally speaking, comedians are quite natural performers, and they get the hang of it quite quickly. It's interesting because I, so I'm a stand up primarily when I'm not doing sitting in my living room in front of a laptop. But um, I used to work when I was in Toronto, I was doing a lot of commercials. And this was what I was always hearing from um, casting agents was that they, and I think to this day, comics take all the work because they are always contributing so much creatively and have that sort of head headspace. Yeah where you can bring ideas to the table. So th is this is more or less your experience as well. Yeah. Well, it might not be um, the, every comedian's um, preference to, to transition into acting. A lot of them do do that. Um, but I think what they have in common with a lot of other creatives that have something else on the side is that uh, uh, it, it allows them to build some kind of brand or some recognition. Um, I get a lot of... Um, very lovely emails from actors telling me, you know, if ever that I need someone, please consider them, and I watch their show real, and it's always very good stuff. But I'm not inclined to respond with a project for them because I don't know. It's weird. I, I haven't connected with their work organically. I don't know. Whereas I can I can see something I love and then contact that person and say, "You were so great. I really love that. Have you got any ideas?" Uh, it, yeah. Right. Okay. And so it might not be just comedians, you know, it can be uh, other creatives and other, you know, whether it's improv or, I don't know, writers or whatever, whatever. But, but comedians do, you know, they're making stuff and if it's funny to you, then you know you're going to get along with them. Right, so you, you're, you enjoy working with people who bring more to the table other than being able to say the lines correctly and in a <laughs> charming cadence. Yeah, I guess, I guess what it does is it saves me... Um, auditioning. I don't audition much for the roles that I do. I mm -hmm. tend to pick from people who I know are already creating stuff in that similar vein. Um, I guess. Um, so when whenever we need a certain type of actor, we'll be like, let's get Lenny, you know, or whatever, whatever. But we, are you talking about Lenny Sherman? 
<laughs> Shout out to Lenny Sherman. He's a good friend. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, because I, I, yeah, I saw him in another one of your films. He's great. Uh, probably not watching this, but still. <laughs> yeah, because actually, the, the next question I was going to ask you was about the audition process. So do you, which you've just basically answered, but you, you don't really have an audition process as, as such. You sort of, whoever pops it's into your head. very often. No, yeah. it's not. Normally, there'll be a role. Um, so the, the writer is probably going to be the star in it, so that's taken. And then there'll be, you know, a romantic lead or an antagonist or something like that. And they'll say, oh, I had someone like this in mind, you know, and they'll have already contacted, contacted that person. And I'm, you know, fine with it. Mm -hmm. um, and every minor role will go, oh, wow, you know who that's great for. That so on the one hand, it means it might keep your pool of actors quite small, but on the other, uh, I do try and um, do projects with new people as often as I can. And so there's always kind of new faces um, getting added to the roster. Who, you know. So yes, I don't, I don't end up auditioning for my stuff, never really, but like ads and stuff. You know, mm. Stuff that I'm not in control of, it's not my money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, not, not about to spend money, but um, yeah, whenever it's ads and stuff, I get no say, absolutely no say, and I go through the traditional casting process or whatever. Mm -hmm. Not my stuff, yeah, not much say on my. Uh, well, I'm going to now bring on Arafili Miss You. I'm just doing a class thing. Oh, no, I didn't do it. Uh, Arafili, Hi, hello, Ben. How are you? <laughs> She's oh, yeah, got some, see you. You got some no, comments. Lovely to see you. I have one weird comment, which is from Nick Rave. If the script was inspired by Andrew Johnson from Wu-Tang, who cut his? Ah. Oh, right. No. Do, you know no. about, do you know about this case? This is very ah, well, niche comment. No, you don't. No, it was a guy who was a Wu Tang. I don't know how we're going into this territory, but he was a Wu Tang affiliate who was, I think he was like um, Freebase or something, and he'd taken so much that he just cut his um, genitals off. And then I think he threw himself out a window or something like that. And then I was watching an interview with the RZA from the Wu Tang Clan. He was like, yeah, you know, we, you know, we, yeah, we, he's like, found God and stuff and he stopped doing drugs. That's your answer, Nick, you weirdo. <laughs> Why would you ask that? Okay. Yeah, I, the, uh, writer, I don't know where that part of how did, came from. <laughs> how did you get rich on Herring? I guess you're friends, aren't you? Yeah, no. Um, so, um, so I saw something I really loved online by a guy called Michael Spicer, who's now super duper famous on Twitter as the guy next door. Um, and... This was something, a little show he was doing about five or six years ago, and I saw this sketch with Rachel Stubbings from While You Were Away that he was in, and so I had to work with him, and we wrote the short together, and we made it, and while we were casting, he said he wanted Richard Herring for the role. He'd worked with him once in the past, maybe he'd do it. Richard doesn't really do much uh, performance, um, as he will always tell me whenever we <laughs> do something else together. You know, we've done three or four things together now. Um, mm. But yeah, so... Gabe Miller, the writer, had just done an incredible short film called A Reasonable Request, which you've got to see, which, like, won Sundance or whatever. You know, like, it did really well. And he saw Mosquito and saw that Richard Herring was in it and wanted to work with Richard Herring and contacted me to say, we do this short, I've written it for Richard, you know, and you could be involved too. And I was like, sweet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so uh, I brought Richard through having worked with him on Mosquito and Gabe brought the script and then we casted it with Rachel who everyone knows and loves and uh, yeah so just always weird like that yeah we we think she's fantastic we Rachel. think she's incredible so, I mean I put her up to the top five comedians globally that I've right? ever seen she's unbelievable I, I don't know what what oh is your God. process working with, with Rachel I'm, I'm the biggest fan yeah yeah um I don't really know. Well, we um, we've set we set up a little. So we directed. We're a director duo now, her and I, oh. uh, under the name Barbara, because we pretty much co-direct everything anyway. So normally it starts with a stupid text from one of us to the other one, and uh, and then it gets fleshed out or it doesn't, and then we set up a date that we don't, and then we shoot it and we just fill it out and sometimes some some years we shoot a couple of things and some years we don't shoot so much <laughs> mm. but the process is just wavelength and what, what we think is going to be funny and stupid and uh how 
kind of melancholy we're feeling or <laughs> right. so yeah so um but yeah we just enjoy working together it's very natural for us so we do as much as we can well continue please continue <laughs> working together it's amazing i just want to say uh just before i go to my corner again that um if anybody is particularly interested in comedy please visit ben malabi's site he has some sorts that are gems he's an incredible director for comedy, um, timing, performances, everything. And with that, I would like to ask you, in general, in comedy, do you think is um, um, what is the most important ingredient? The director, the script, the performance? What's the oh, everything? I don't bloody know. Mm. Uh, I don't know. There's a secret sauce in there, isn't there? I think there's rhythm. Rhythm is very important. Rhythm. Let's go with rhythm. Mm. I think rhythm timing, yeah. Timing. So you've editing. Got get, you've got to get the flow right. People have to be on board straight away. They have to get it. They have to kind of know all the pieces. And then if you surprise them, they're surprised. They can't be kind of guessing or confused too much or for too long. They can't be too big a build-up or else they, you know, so it's just about being in control of them, your your audience's patience and their tolerance and so with, with while you're away it's a very slow start it's very kind of under underplayed and very subtle and quiet because he says i'm going to cut my dick off and it's such a stupid line that you you've you've earned it in a way like you can do something that ridiculous if you've done something quite slow. so yeah that's what i go for and also i'm in control of it I'm you are, to my corner. oh okay uh, it also establishes i think in the beginning you've by playing it so slowly and her being so pissed off you kind of get this idea that he's always doing stupid fucking things <laughs> yeah. that are just driving her yeah, mad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And yet she's aced him. She's sold, uh, sold out the house in a gambling yeah. disaster. So, yeah. But then so, completely downplayed it. Yeah, fantastic. Um, that's excellent. Oh, yeah, so you are friends with Francesca Fowler, who we previously had on. You got any, any goss? We've been texting. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, we met. We met. Uh, we met through Rachel Stubbings, I think, weirdly enough, and she came on to do a bit part in a film, uh, which we then cut her out of. And then uh, she was in a Mosquito, which you mentioned earlier, and I cut her out of that as well. So she's in two of my films and got removed. We didn't know that. And that was like a running. Huh? She said we didn't know that. We really didn't know. Yeah, that. yeah. yeah. No it's one, no really one would know that she was in those films. She got cut, and uh, that was a kind of running gag between the two of us. Um, but we did this great, I say great, but I like it, a great short called Pull, which you should check out online. I think it's, I think it's public. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we're working together on that. We've written a series outline for it and blah, blah, blah. But, cool. Yeah, so i got to ask in closing for you, because just because we're interested, it, what, what's in the, what are you looking to do? Like, are you looking to work in feature length stuff or, or like, you, is there any sort of plans for this? Hey, right now? You know what? Right now, I'd like a job. I just like so <laughs> like the virus to stop killing people and for me to be allowed to know anything. But once I'm allowed to reshoot, I don't know, it changes. Um, but I think right now, I'm quite focused on trying to get a series. I'd love to do a series, mm. or like a block or something for TV. That would be mm. uh, my dream. But then I've got so many feature scripts in development as well. But I mean, you know, Jesus, those are it's impossible. But, you know, just keep spinning the um, plates. Just get um, back to yeah, work. That's what we all want. Eh? Just get back to work. Just get let back to out of the house. Be nice. Fair enough. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to us, Ben. It's been a pleasure. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for letting us show you short. We are going to be uh, showing another uh, film of yours at the very end, as a which I'm not even supposed to mention because it's supposed to be a surprise. So there you go. So we'll just cut that bit out afterwards. Um, great. Thank you. Big everyone, big round of applause for Ben Malaby. <laughs> See you later, buddy. There he goes. And